filmmaker and an author, and I'm so glad that you joined us today as an audience, but I'm also glad as my my guest, Tim Mahoney, uh, has, has joined us today, and he's going to tell us about the patterns of evidence. Uh, welcome to Morning Moments, Tim. Well, thank you, Andrew, for having me. I'm glad to be here. Well, let me uh, ask, ask the question, what do you do and why do you do it? Well, uh, I'm a filmmaker. Uh, and as you said, I'm filmmaker, author. I wasn't uh, thinking that I would ever be, uh, I had a desire to make films. I wanted to see a film when I was 18 years old. I never had gone to a movie before, but I wanted to see a movie called The Hiding Place. And it was a Billy Graham film. And it was a story of Corey Ten Boom and their family who hid uh, Jewish people in their, their home. I saw that movie three times in one week. And that sort of began a passion for me. Uh, I couldn't ex actually explain other than just sort of a drawing to become a filmmaker and a filmmaker of, of I think, biblical and Christian themes. Uh, that became a, a very in a big interest for my, myself. And about over 30 years ago, I ended up finding out about a, an organization that today is called International Christian Visual Media. And I ended up um, wanting to, you know, that's where I met a lot of my close friends. They were also people who were wanted to be producers or directors or writers of, of content. It was about our faith, sharing our faith. And I think uh, that became a great passion of mine. So you asked me, who am I? So I'm a filmmaker. I consider myself first off, uh, I, I am a Christian. I, I did accept Christ uh, when I was a young child. My father led me to the Lord. Uh, but I also consider myself a filmmaker who is a Christian as opposed to a Christian filmmaker um, uh, because I think that uh, I've been making films that are investigative with a whole series of films called Patterns of Evidence, and I'm looking for patterns of evidence of God acting in history. And uh, so we've made uh, over the you know course of, of a number of years, it's taken a while to make these films, but I've made uh, one called Patterns of Evidence, The Exodus, which took 12 years, Andrew, 12 years to make it. Uh, and, uh, and that's when I met one of your friends, Chris Mitchell. I see uh, Dateline Jerusalem. I think he might have even given me a copy of Dateline Jerusalem when I was with him. And we had, uh, we had him over to have uh, uh, to eat with us uh, when we were in Jerusalem. And uh, Chris uh, has been a, a great help. Uh, a friend uh, to have. And um, so as we were working on this, these films, um, um, it, I think that we're dealing with something much bigger than, um, than I realized. I can tell you that's, that's for sure. I thought I was going to work on a small little project. And as it turned into a bigger project and bigger project and bigger project, I kept adding in more interviews and going to more places. And eventually I felt that there was a much larger investigation going on here. And what am I investigating? I'm investigating, is God's word true? Because there's a lot of people out there that are attacking the Bible. If you go off to any college or any, a lot of even seminaries, they'll tell you that the Bible is not historical. Uh, it's, uh, it's a beautiful book of poetry. And I, and I've, I've filmed these people at these uh, different places, and you realize that there is a um, there is a theme of questioning the truth of God's word. So when you when we we looked at well, what am I doing? Who am I? I'm I'm a just a regular guy who makes films, but I think God had a calling on my life to make specific types of films. And there's a verse I wanted to share with you. It's from Isaiah chapter forty, verse three. As I was praying about, well, what is it that we're supposed to be doing? It says, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and, and make straight in the desert a highway for our God. So you say, well, what does that verse mean? And I think for me, uh, in what I've, what I've become, what I started doing by making these Bible historical films, is I'm preparing a way for the Lord because there's a wilderness of information out there. You and I talked about all the clutter, a little bit of technology can get, get in the way of lots of different things. Well, there's lots of messages that come on these devices. There's enormous amounts, uh, millions of messages that are coming, but they're not coming from a biblical worldview. They're coming from a, a, a lost worldview. And uh, 
our children and our grandchildren, everybody is looking at this. They're they're basically, you know, just stuck looking at this this piece of media, or if they're watching a screen, wherever those screens are, they are fixated on them. So what's you know what happens when when um, all this media is going into people's lives? It changes them, right? So where is the hope? Where is the salvation story? And I felt that in some ways God was calling me to make these films. It's been very difficult at times to make them, but to to go on these investigations into the Middle East and search for a pattern of evidence. A pattern of evidence is really a scientific approach. So the you know from a science standpoint, uh, what what's going on is that. Science looks for patterns to say, is my hypothesis true? And so what has happened in the world of archaeology is that people are have said the Bible events had to happen in this location and at this time period. And once they've placed it there and they don't find any evidence for it, then they dismiss the Bible. They dismiss the credi- credibility of it. And what we are looking at is that there's a pattern that is there, but it's there where the Bible says it is, not where the scholars say it is. And, and that's basically how I was able to make films and have content to be able to you know, put in them because I was identifying the historical patterns that were there and as, as, um, as evidence for God acting in history. We've made uh, the Exodus, Patterns of Evidence Exodus, and then we did the Moses controversy, which is about uh, the writing, what, what would Moses have used if he were to ri- write a Bible? And then we have uh, the Red Sea Miracle 1 and 2. Those are two other films that have come out. Now we are on a whole new film uh, called uh, Journey to Mount Sinai. Uh, and Journey to Mount Sinai is another big investigation. It's a two-part investigation. And what I'm doing is I'm doing something that I don't think has really happened very much is I'm making this an interactive film. So if you're interested in, in going on the journey to Mount Sinai, we have actually investigation mature, criteria. And so the people can uh, go to our website, patternsofevidence.com, and they can look at the journey to Mount Sinai film, and they can download this PDF, this PDF, and then it's going to give them, uh, they can read the scriptures where uh, where it says that the Israelites, the journey that they took, it's we have one criteria is the journey to the mountain. There's subset criteria in there, which are campsites, the wildernesses, and then the time of travel. Then we've got the land of Midian where Moses fled to, and we're talking about the mountain, which would be in the vicinity of Midian. And then we go on to the backside of the wilderness. The Bible says that Moses went to the backside of the wilderness. What does that mean? What's that definition mean? And then attributes. You know, the mountain had to have a place large enough for the Israelites to camp there. There had to be enough water. The Bible says there was a stream there. There had to be a cave because the prophet, I think it's Ezekiel, went there and hid in the cave. Uh, uh, and, and that's where the Lord spoke to him. And so then there's other things. There's um, the golden calf worship. There's artifacts. That whole artifact question is, are there any artifacts inscriptions, altars or pillars, graves? Is that any, any evidence like that located near the mountain? So what I ended up doing was creating for the audience what we call a Mount Sinai scorecard. So this has, we're going to look at six different mountains. we got two mountains or three mountains in the first film, three mountains in the second film. And this is like bowling. You get a strike, a spare, or a gutter ball. So those mountains, you're going to bowl for, uh, I'm, I'm kidding, basically, but it kind of looks like that because of the way we have the scoring, you know, it's, the score sheets are here. When you go to this different mountain, so I'm take you on this investigation, this helps you to kind of keep track of it. There's a lot of information at the end of the day. While you're there, you're going to be able to grade what you think of that presentation for that mountain. And so this is going to be in theaters October 17th and 18th in over I think it's now over 800 theaters. Great. It's a fathom event, and you can go to patternsofevidence.com and look, watch the trailer. Uh, you can get the scorecard, and then you can purchase a ticket. And we're coming close to that time of voting. And I say, why is it important to go to movies like this? Is because you're voting for the Bible. You're voting for biblical films. 
you know, what you're doing when you show up to a film like that is you're, you're basically saying, I want to see more of this kind of material. And uh, uh, most of the time, these films don't get into theaters. But uh, our films have been fortunate enough to basically make it into theaters or high quality films. And then afterwards, we have uh, a short panel discussion uh, with uh, three different uh, Christian leaders, uh, Pastor Mark Henry, uh, Tom Berkowitz, and Jeff Cavins. Um, and uh, Pastor Henry is a Protestant pastor. He has a ministry. Uh, Tom Berkowitz is a Messianic believer. And uh, Jeff Cavins is a Catholic Bible teacher. And so we're going we're gonna to talk about what does this film mean for us today? What does it mean to leave Egypt and go into the wilderness and meet God when you basically don't have any you're worried about water, you're worried about food, and this is where manna comes from heaven. So this is the journey that the Israelites are on, and we're going to unpack that so that it has a spiritual component, not just all intellectual investigation, but there's also this other part that we're going to say, okay, at the end of the film, what does this mean for me today? What we're learning is that these films are really encouraging to people of faith. My films, the way we've created them, and our team has put this together, uh, are films that are shareable so that uh, I make them so that you wouldn't be embarrassed to share them with maybe somebody who's not a believer or someone who's skeptical or someone, a family member. Uh, shareability is really important. So like I said, we've got a number of films at PatternsofEvidence.com. You can look for them. Uh, and the other thing is we've got a weekly email that goes out called Thinker Updates. And that's going to give you um, articles about what's happening in the world of Bible and archeology. span And uh, they're very encouraging for your faith. And then finally, we also have something called the Historical Faith Society. Our films are our nonprofit films now that going forward. So we, uh, you know, we, we raised the money from donations. That's how we made Journey to Mount Sinai is, is that people donated to help us make that film. And if you become a monthly supporter of the Historical Faith Society, you will actually get videos uh, every week about the Bible, uh, and information about archaeology and the Bible. So we've got resources for people. Uh, and this is one way for them to come along and, and get uh, an ongoing connection to the historical preservation and education and passing on our faith to the next generation. So we also have uh, video comments uh, or interviews on, well, how do I pass my faith to my children or to my grandchildren? I think that's the big battle that we're we're faced with right now. Um, and I think that once again, preparing the way of the Lord, we have to make sure that our grandchildren and our children realize that there's a pattern of evidence for the Bible and that this evidence really exists. And we need to prepare that way for the Lord in their hearts by giving them the antidote this, to this uh, virus of unbelief. So my two words are vote. For the Bible, take and that way you have the antidote against the virus of unbelief. Two V words. Good, very good. Please uh, check out these uh, these uh, um, links that I'm setting down below here in the, in this interview, and also in the comment section on YouTube and uh, Facebook. Please uh, click onto his links. Uh, and as you leave this interview today, I want you to take time and pray for Tim and his filmmaking ministry and that God would continue to bless him, continue to use him, give him what's next, give him what's the next fresh film that, that, that needs to be seen. Tim needs your prayers and you need to practice people. So pray that God would richly bless him. Thank you for joining us, Tim, to, for thank morning moments. Much. And thank you and keep coming back if you would for some more morning moments. <laughs>